If you think that I'm not being fair to women, then all of this is like the mildest rebuke compared to the vicious character assassination that men are subjected to on even one night's BBC television, or a typical two-page spread in The Guardian. And then you get the stuff in the media, which is, to quite a large extent, is controlled by female editors. Um, because, again, with the uh, EOC, you had women into journalism. So, of course, you had vast numbers. I mean, one of our members is a journalist, a freelance, and he said nearly all the editors where he works are all female, and all they want in their newspapers is male hate. So, for the last 20 or 30 years, all we've had in the newspapers is article after article after article describing men as useless, pathetic. Uh, we're worse at almost anything you could think of from A to Z. What's going on here? We thought Men thought this was equality, so they sat back and, and let it all happen and then suddenly realised that they were being shafted. Why am I forced by the TV licence fee to pay for news broadcasts that hate men? Or a website that hates men so much it treats male domestic violence deaths as insignificant? News shows that denigrate men and hide their suffering? Drama that portrays men as abusers? Light entertainment that would be illegal directed at any other group? Here's a sneak preview of next week's hapless hubby, totally unaware he's about to savour the delights of dog training. And a radio show for women and not men. When asked why they don't produce a men's hour radio show to go along with women's hour, the BBC claims that women's hour covers male issues just as much as women's. Fine, then call it men's hour. Here's my alternative BBC schedule. A schedule where women take the place of men, just for once. One website, amongst many others, aims to tell men how they should behave in order to make women happier. So as I've asked before, how do the typical images of men on our screens condition our society to treat men? The BBC and other television agencies seem to enjoy demeaning men. This documentary appeared on British television in 2004. What would life be like if it was a women's world? It discusses the idea of women ruling the world and men being something less than second-class citizens. There's a minority of men who just don't fit in to society in one way or another. Possibly they don't fit into the feminised labour market. They can't adapt sufficiently uh, to, to fit into that. So they're really misfits in, in this modern society. In 2020, society expects modern man to adapt to its feminine values of sensitivity and compliance. The fighting, hunting male has gone underground. It's just one of the insidious techniques of feminism to blame men for their own troubles, while simultaneously blaming men for women's troubles as well. If a man doesn't fit in in the workplace, he's a misfit who can't adapt. But if a woman can't fit in... There's still huge institutional gender discrimination against women. Well, it's oppression, it's patriarchy, it's a male-dominated world, and it's even institutional sexism. I'm surprised it's only a minority of men that are considered misfits in the light of the way men are treated in society. Rather than men's inability to adapt, the exact opposite is true. It's a testament to man's incredible adaptability, patience and nobility in the face of his oppression that society has not broken down entirely. And what happens to men in this situation isn't right. Why haven't fathers long ago gone on the rampage in our society, rioting, marching, attacking vindictive mothers, arrogant judges, the police and members of parliament, and burning cities to the ground? The way fathers have been treated in our system is more than enough reason for such behaviour, but men have restrained themselves to peaceful protest. Why haven't male workers rebelled against society for forcing them to work to age 65 when women only need work to age 60 for their pensions? Why have they not marched about their working conditions that mean that virtually 100% of workplace deaths and injuries occur to men alone? 
Why have men accepted the poor treatment of boys in the school system that's driving them away from education and limiting their futures as a result, whilst girls are simultaneously encouraged and unfairly assisted in the education system? There's still huge institutional dis gender discrimination against women. And how does this discrimination against women show itself? Can it be seen in deaths of police officers on duty? Is it obvious from workplace-related injuries? Perhaps it's clear from the death figures from Iraq. This BBC documentary utterly fails to represent men and women's true position in society relative to each other and to the state. Instead, it perpetuates the widely believed myths of female oppression and the equally common myth that women are somehow superior to men. Women love the idea of a world of work that requires nothing more than a computer screen, a phone, a cuddly toy on her desk and a water cooler in the corner. There's a more immediate and pragmatic issue of the nature of work and what it will mean for women if uh, we're living in a world where the technology has so radically changed our lives. And I think the most obvious change is um, the reduction in emphasis on physical labour. If now you sit at a keyboard, you don't have to be physically strong anymore. And that will mean a whole change, I think, for the rise of women in the workplace. The role of men is not disappearing and can never disappear. Men's contribution to society is not based on our superior skills with our hands. It's based on our superior skills full stop, in every field. Men are very difficult to compete with, even if you're another man. If you're a woman, you have no chance. Women have often dreamed of a world of complete automation, where they could finally compete on even terms with men. But women have failed to see the obvious. Even if such a dream were possible, it's only men that could ever bring it about, and only men that could fix it when it broke. Organisations need women because the whole structure of organisations is changing. The kind of bureaucracy, the hierarchies that used to run industrial capitalism are no longer appropriate in a very rapidly changing global economy. Women have become dissociated from what real work means. Women don't know or care about the array of technologies that makes the phone ring, who created the keyboard they use, where the energy comes from to power her screen, who wrote the operating system she uses, or even who made the chair she sits in. These are the same women who spend all day addicted to Facebook without the tiniest appreciation of the men behind it and the technology created by men that makes it all possible. It's the work of men, and only the work of men, that makes it possible for women to be useful in the workplace at all. The nastiest of the many nasty ideas prevalent in this BBC-sponsored film is that women are fundamentally better than men. We can screen and select an embryo for propensity to disease, IQ, gender, obviously. I think I'd like a girl. Of course. The documentary even goes as far as to gleefully ponder the complete extinction of men. The difference between men and women lies in the chromosomes. Whereas women possess two X-shaped sex chromosomes, Men possess one X and one little Y-shaped chromosome. Apart from its role in determining maleness, the Y chromosome appears to be genetically inactive. Three times shorter than the X and possessing only a few dozen genes compared to the 15,000 carried by the X, the Y chromosome is slowly decaying. Despite what women might tell themselves, that little Y-shaped chromosome makes the world go round.